Okay, let's finish off these forks today. So I've got a clean dry bottle, which I've marked 177 milliliters on, which is the um, workshop manual recommended amount of fork oil. So first of all, let's measure that up. There are two ways of measuring this fork oil. So you put it in, in, um, in milliliters. And then you measure down from the top of the fork to find out whether the level's correct once you've added it. I'm about overestimating a tiny bit here for the stuff that's going to refuse to come out of the bottle because it's as thick as it is. So um, something the workshop manual says is uh, the next part we can do after we've added this is to measure with the spring removed. So... That necessitates the spring being removed um, down from here. 165 mil should be where we find the fluid. Now the shock's at an angle at the moment, so that's not going to work. But let's get the fluid in first. Poured that a bit too fast. So as this goes in, it's um, going to need to find its way past the restrictions and the valving and everything in the bottom. So, hence it's coming back out again. Hopefully that slight bit of extra is the same amount that we've dropped on the floor. I'm just going to grab a rag. Please submit jokes in the comments about polishing my rod. And, um, yep, as per the workshop manual, as if it wasn't bad enough to polish our rod, <laughs> now we've got to um, agitate it. And you can actually hear, or I don't know if you can, but I could for a second there, a kind of glug, glug, glug. And then we're going to um, measure down 165, and there you go. We've got a we've got a wet end by yeah, just slightly. So that's absolutely perfect. I doubt you'll be able to see this in any detail, but it's just touched one side of the. Uh, tape measures tip it hasn't actually gotten uh, sort of damp up the sides of it so we're nigh on perfect you can um, be more exacting if you've got a bike that deserves it but uh, well the other thing you can feel is that the uh, bottom of that spring is in oil as it was before we're going to throw the spacer tube across the garage. It's going to be one of those days. On the upside, I'm feeling slightly better today. Um, so let's. Oh, that's definitely working now. It's becoming um, more difficult to extend my rod um, as that uh, fluid is finding its way into all the places it needs to be. I'm just going to pop this cap in. Actually, there's a little bit of muck on the threads there. You don't want any muck inside this anywhere. There we go. Screw the cap on. Doesn't need to be monster tight, just tight enough to uh, ensure that the seal is made and that the oil is going to stay inside the tube. And um, 
You can see down here, all the oil that I dropped has gone and sat on top of this seal. So, you know, naturally it's sat there waiting to um, make it look like I've got a fork seal failure to an MOT tester, which is always nice. Just going to see if I've got some tissue paper to get down there. Soak it up and then we'll do the other one. There we go, spot on. Normally now you'd also put the dust boot over. I'm still trying to track down ones that fit. I've also noticed we've got a snapped bolt here. I wondered why one was missing, so maybe we'll tackle that later. Let's see if there's not something we can do about this stuck bolt. First, we're gonna clean it up. Be careful of these things, otherwise this happens. Now we can see what we're uh, getting into. I think the next step is to find my good friend WD-40. See if he can't help encourage that um, to let go a bit. We can take a few different approaches here. Um, the simplest of which, which I strongly doubt will work, is just to see if we can knock this round. As expected, the likelihood of that working is probably quite low and will likely end up destroying everything in our path trying to do that. I don't remember who in my family I last lent my tap and die set to, but whoever it was evidently doesn't like me very much. Just tidying up the threads on the bolt that uh, goes in this mudguard holder because as you can see they're all peened over the whole lot was cross threaded together and in a sorry state for itself so could just replace the bolt but I can't see myself spending another 15 minutes with the Dremel and I'm out of angle grinder discs so this will do Look what's arrived in the post. The only question we have to answer is, um, should we put these back on underneath? These are the old perished dust caps. I'm starting to see why they're perished now, because it looks like they never were quite the right size. Um, although they do kind of help to hold that bottom piece on, so I think we'll stick them on there. And then we've got a clip. just to loosely hold the top in place. These look about the right length. When you order them, you've got to do tube up here, which I think is 30 mil. You've got to do down here, which is 50 mil, and then length. I went for slightly over length on these. It doesn't matter if they compress a little bit, as long as they don't get in the way at the complete bottom of travel. So uh, we'll do the other one, and then we'll stick this on the bike. Two nice new uh, 
bolts. Don't know if you can see them on camera here. Or one nice new bolt, one re-threaded. Go in and out perfectly. I don't think the mud guard's going to stay down here. I'm going to try and lift it up. But um, I might still use these mounting points to then extend up. Not sure with what yet, but something to extend up to bring the mud guard up. Otherwise it's going to get chewed up full of mud. This is another one of those jobs where there's a distinct order in the workshop manual. And you'll make your life a lot easier if you follow it. So now those top two are finger tight. Um, <laughs> this is what I'm talking about order. So now you want to let these go. Because doing up these top two is going to pull, and I need a different size socket, is going to pull everything up to meet the very top piece of the clamp. Okay, you're not going to be able to get those super tight because obviously everything is going to spin. Once you've got them mostly tight, then you can move down. Also in the workshop manual, of course, there are torque specs for all of these. Either use a torque wrench or just be sensible because a lot of this stuff is aluminium or cheap as chips iron. You also don't want to go marring or destroying the um, forks themselves. So just take it easy. And see we've got a cable clamp there that wants to make itself inconvenient. You can kind of tell by the fact they put a cable clamp on this bolt though that it doesn't need to be done up to uh, within an inch of its life to do its job. So there we go. New fork seals, forks re-oiled, some boots on them for call points. Just need to do the front tyre, rebuild the front brakes, sort something out for the mud guard, and then put it back together. And at that point, I think we've got a riding bike. So let's get on with it. Or maybe first let's do something dumber and way more fun. I did say it was going to be dumber. Alright, here's the stupid. Some adventure pegs. So, <laughs> what I've had to do is drill a new hole to catch the spring, because these are dodgy, off-brand nonsense, so they don't come with particularly good fixing anything. This is an important thing, so you need your pegs to spring back if they get stuck up. Ask me how I know. And it's just about finding a way 
to get this together in a way that lets that happen. So that when you're riding along and you catch something, it can flick up out the way, but it always returns back again. That'll wear in. Um, and then we'll just stick an R-clip on the back, supplied in the kit of dodgy nonsense. Well, they're not actually R-clips on these ones. They're split pins. So in from the most upward facing side in case it does come apart. Rather large split pins for this purpose, I have to say. And there we go. Just got to uh, sort out this sticky out spring. Probably going to uh, fold it over like so, so it can't escape, and then just knock off the excess. Let's go for the whole process on this side. There we go. Knock out the pen and the spring. box maintenance as with all these kind of things. And now for my own personal benefit, just um, sort of holding it up in the air to understand which way round it's going to go on the bike. So this one's actually fairly different. So it goes this way round, which means our peg can go in like this. Which means... We're going to want our whole closest to us this time. Okay, jobs are good. Then we'll take this bend out to make our life easier. Get the swarf off. It's going to want to go through. From the inside like that and stick out. You can kind of see we've got the pegs sort of what I might call dislocated at the moment. So it goes this way up, so we're going to want to go in from the top of the pin. This is 
kind of hard to show because it requires a little bit of fighting. So I just got the pliers and pulled that um, pin as best I could. Now we're going to rotate this round into its resting position, which should be like that. We want to go in from the top again. Like so. Now we've got something to lever against. Get the bottom in, sits like this on the bike. So, there we go. Now, same as before, split pin. Gonna need to grab a hold of this to stop it spinning. Um, and then I'm just going to do the same thing, like so. gnarly foot pegs. Let's stick them on the bike. That's better isn't it? Time for some serious work. Brushing your teeth. Uh, in this case with acid. Just a very light oxalic acid or citric acid to do this as well. Um, there's just a bit of white corrosion inside the channels where the seals sit and we don't want to we don't want to trap that underneath the seals and let it get worse. Citric acid's preferred for aluminium, um, but it shouldn't matter for what we're doing right now. As long as we wash it all off fairly quick and don't let it sit. Because we do want it to eat the corrosion, just not the caliper. It's looking much better in there now. Okay, now I'm done brushing my teeth. Um, it's time to get these seals in. Make sure everything is clean and dry. The only stuff you want in here is either grease or brake fluid. If you don't have the grease, keep a bottle of brake fluid around um, and keep everything lubricated with it. If you do have red brake grease, use that. I'm going to use it liberally on absolutely everything because what you want to try and avoid here is any seals tearing jumping getting snagged or caught up so grease it up and with these seals um, just make sure there's no schmutz no dirt no bits on them the only thing you want on them is the rubber they're made of and grease um, it's going to depend by caliper what kind of seals you've got these ones are not directional um, but there are two One's fat, one's thin, um, and by looking when I took it apart, I know that the fat one goes in sort of lowest, if you will, um, and then the thin one sits above it. So that's the fat one in. Um, there's like a slightly fatter groove. If you didn't pay attention when you took your caliper apart, go by the size of the groove. Here's the thin one. Same thing. So you can bend these around to get them in, but try not to kink them. Don't pick at them with your nails. Don't use screwdrivers or anything else. These are delicate. They're going to live in here for a long time. So get them in perfect, clean, greased, and you won't be back here again when your brakes fail. 
very relatively shortly. Also, on a motorbike, you've only got two brakes, so um, you probably don't want to hear the words brakes fail. This is the old cylinder, bucket, piston, call it what you will. Um, because the top of it was so rotten and because I had to use a pair of mole grips to get it out, I've opted for a new one. I'm just going to carefully test that these are the same size. And then this goes in. I remember this being a bit difficult when it came out because you kind of have to go in at an angle to get it inside here. Um, but before we do that, I'm going to give it a real good clean. Make sure there's no bits on it, in it, or around it. Make sure there's no imperfections on it that um, might tear up those seals. I'm going to go and do this without the camera in front of me, I think. And I'll bring you back when I've done it so you don't see me F it up. Alright, that part of the fight is over. And the seal appears to still be in good condition. If you've got compressed air, you can um, blow it in the back here to... Uh, you know, push that back out and check it. I don't, so I'm just going to trust it. And then if it uh, wets brake fluid all over the place, when we put it back on the bike, then we know what's gone wrong. Next thing then is um, some of the hardware that goes on the caliper. The rebuild kit I bought, I think is about 37 quid. Um, and it comes with a whole bunch of stuff, uh, including a replacement bleed nipple, replacement crush washers for the um, incoming banjo, which are there, and even a new boot for the bleed nipple. So we'll pop that in. I'm a big fan of replacing the bleeders when you can, um, just because if you don't, then it will be the next time that you use it that it snaps off. If everyone replaced the bleeders every time they had the calipers off, the world would be a better place. There'd be far fewer stuck bleed nipples on calipers. You can see I also cleaned this off. I had it through the ultrasonic. Um, it turns out it was covered in paint where some previous owner of the bike had uh, tried to jazz it up by painting it. There's the new bleed nipple. Um, then we've got rubbers for these sliders. Okay, so these go, there's two different sizes. Big and small. These go into here and sort of the bottom ridge I guess you'd call it just tucks in around the inside there's like a pressed in steel insert I think here and there you go once that's in it's not going anywhere so if I can give you a slightly better view of the other side so as you can see this kind of has a shape to it and um, there's this Smaller diameter, but thicker piece. Just going to kind of concertina fold it in. And then once it gets into the hole, just, um, there you go, just run your finger round. Well, I can give this a little turn just to make sure it's not pinched up anywhere and you can see it's now gone in and that's a pair of new slider rubbers that's the caliper nearly ready to go back on the bike um, I don't think I've got enough assembly grease and it's not really the right thing um, to pack the sliders out with but just gonna have a quick look at this so these are the slider pins they're a tiny bit worse for wear might just um, this one's all right, but I might just give this one a polish up. And um, also there's kind of a, a rubber damper that goes on this piece that I don't think I have a new one of. Um, although I've kept the old one in my pile over here. Looks like this. Um, and just goes on here. I think it's to give the caliper a little bit of wiggle, but not too much. 
you can replace these pens as well as you can see this one comes out with a hex this one with a, an allen drive but um i don't think that damage is bad enough we're going to need to replace it at least not for now i'm just going to go and clean that up and i'll be back in a moment okay the calipers together now with the sliders i've greased them i'm not going to tell you what grease i've used because i know how to start arguments on the internet and that's one of the best ways Suffice to say it's rubber, safe temperature, safe grease, suitable for using around brakes. So now it's just a case of um, cleaning up the last few things, like the uh, pen that goes through the pads, which is seemingly in okay condition, despite being really difficult to get out. Popping the springs back in again, um, and then fitting the new pads having first washed my hands to get all of the grease off because we don't want that on our brake pads. Once we've done that, I'm going to probably flush uh, quite a bit of fluid through the master cylinder just to check what state it's in. And then um, that means we get nice fresh fluid into here, ready for us to bleed it. And um, we're probably gonna do that with the old uh, bottle method and then we should have a front brake. So, first things first, got to get the uh, pad spring in. I did check the new kit, doesn't come with a replacement, which is a shame. I'm gonna pop my gloves on, because they don't have grease on. We've also got this um, curious little spring here that uh, one end of which goes into the caliper there and uh, the other probably going to need the grips for this. Clips over the top here. Doesn't actually, it does come all the way through, but it doesn't actually um, clip onto anything. I've double checked the pads to see if there's anything that it should clip onto with those, but there isn't. Here's our two new pads. They're visually identical, so. Gonna drop those in and just for the sake of completeness gonna compare them against what came out there's probably nothing wrong with what came out uh, other than they're an unknown quantity I don't know who fitted them when they fitted them how careful they were how contaminated they are and also they've been stuck to the disc for whoever knows how long um, while the bike's been off the road so safest bet is to replace them with a known quantity you might not be able to see this but in order to get these in we've got to compress that spring <laughs> which is going to be difficult especially since i'm trying not to touch the face of the pads at all Okay, we're through one. I'm trying to pick the pad up without touching the face of it. Okay, we're um, down to the threads here. So I'm gonna have to grab something to uh, wind this in.
just before this thread disappears in, I'm going to give it a um, little tiny blob of our aforementioned um, undisclosed grease. Just so that when we come back again, we're not uh, fighting to get it out as hard as we were last time. Okay, that's in. Brake pads, springs, grease, sliders, new bleed nipple, and we've got those two washers over there. We're going to plop that down for a moment and we're going to go and um, take a look at the other end of the equation. Here we are at the other end of the equation, um, and <laughs> don't worry, I've got new screws for this because someone's been here before. Um, these are a bit of a fight to remove. Friendly reminder, don't drip brake fluid on paintwork, it eats it. We've still got some fluid in here, doesn't look awful, which is a good sign. Just pop the hose off and it does look like we do indeed have life, so I'm going to suck out the fluid that's in there, drop some new stuff in and pump it until I see the clean stuff coming out. If you haven't got one, head down to a radio controlled model supply shop or something similar and um, pick up one of these. They're fuel bottles. If you squeeze them, they're very effective at um, emptying containers. There's a bit of sediment, probably dissolved rubber sat in the bottom here, so I'm just going to wipe that out. Some uh, dot four brake fluid, just so that you don't think I'm putting water in here, because it looks like it. Well, you joined me after a bit of furious work. Um, long story short, I was going to do Nathan's um, putting a tire on quickly challenge. I've got the footage of it, unfortunately, um, I stuck the tire iron through the tube about 10 minutes in um, and had to stop and patch it, so I think I forfeit that and um, I kind of wasn't in the mood after that to uh, go back, take it all apart and put it back together. Tires are probably not one of my favourite things, then I realised I'd pinched the tube up by the valve, so I had to sit and fiddle with it very gently with some plastic bicycle tire irons to move the uh, bead of the tire off the tube. For now it's holding air, fingers crossed it continues to. So I've popped it back on the bike. Um, I've stuck the brake caliper on and bled that because frankly that's not something I want to do while also touching my phone. Brake fluid is horrible and as I said on a video earlier, I'm a mess. I will get stuff like brake fluid all over me given any chance. So the brakes have had a round of bleeding. They work, they feel fairly stiff. Um, there's certainly enough to dive the forks, but I thought I'd bring you along for uh, a much more glamorous job. Don't um, ever tell me I don't give you the good ones. And that is, now that we're done bleeding, there's the matter of those really rusty screws. So, here we have a pair of countersunk Yamaha compatible crosshead screws, which should, assuming I don't drop them, nicely finish off our brake job. Replacing these is always a good idea because one of these rounding out always ruins your day. Leads to... Uh, trying to do a brake job 
where you can only spin the reservoir cap 90 degrees and then you wreck the rubber. There we go, much better. Still getting a bit of um, crackling and hissing from the caliper, which suggests I've probably trapped a bit of air in it, but um, we'll wait until the bike is rideable. We'll take it slowly up and down the road a couple of times, warm up the caliper a bit, um, and then we'll bleed it again. And that should be us done. I need to dig out my um, good old Halfords Easy Bleed. I have no idea where it's gone. I haven't used it in about five years, so that should help us out. For the time being, I just went with the... Um, dip a hose inside a bottle of fluid method 